Hi, I'm Chris Weston, and today we're going to do a little math problem. We're going to have a little fun. I'm going to challenge your thinking about traditional planning a little bit, and when we're done, I, I want your opinion. I'm going to give you a choice of being two different people. Person A and Person B. All right. Person A has accumulated a nest egg of five million dollars. Person B has accumulated a nest egg of three million dollars. Now, my first question to you is, you want to be person A or do you want to be person B? Because traditional planning and traditional models have told us forever that person A is the person to be. Bigger is better, mostest is the best, and the bestest is the mostest. Okay? So let's look at how traditional models and traditional planning actually work in this scenario. <laughs> Your financial advisor tells you that in today's world, uh, the safe withdrawal rate is 4%. It's actually less, but let's use 4%. So you have a 4% safe withdrawal rate that tells you that you can go the next 30 years drawing 4% out of that 5 million and have a 95% chance of having a dollar left or not running out of money. So let's, let's use that safe withdrawal rate and let's take 4% of 500 or 5 million. Simple math says that's 200,000. Okay, so your first year retirement on a $5 million estate, you get to draw 200000 But now, because of where this money lies, you get to pay the IRS. My question to you right now is, do you think taxes are going to go up in the future? Because if they are, it's going to throw a wrench into this already. But let's say right now that your effective tax rate is 20%. We'll be a little conservative. Interestingly enough, the average retiree's tax rates are higher. But state and federal, let's use 20%. Well, you're going to pay the federal government 20% of 200000 and what is that? $40,000. You get to keep $160,000. Now, what if tax rates go to 25%? That goes to one hundred fifty. What if tax rates go to 200,000 or, or 20 or 30 percent? This goes to 140. The point is, you, you built an account here that you cannot calculate the debt that you owe to the government. You're going to pay it when they tell you when and, and how much. Now, that's bad enough, but that might be manageable. How do you feel about this? Social Security between a husband and wife you might get another 50K. So 160 plus 50K is just 210. That's what you get to spend, right? Well, no. Because of this amount, your Social Security now becomes taxable to the point of 85% of it becomes taxable. Now, without doing the math, I've already done the math. You'll get to keep $41,500 of your Social Security. What, what that means to me is you just paid the U.S. government $8,500 of your Social Security at a 20% tax rate. Given your lifetime, if you live to life expectancy, that's approaching a quarter of a million dollars that you're giving the IRS back on your Social Security. Did you know that? So you take $41,500 and you add it to 160, and that's $201,500 that you get to spend, right? Well, not yet. Because the Medicare is gonna step in now and because of this income, you're gonna be penalized and you're gonna give up another $10,000 just in Medicare penalties. So in this scenario, you still get to keep, what, 190, what is it, 191, 191,500. Now remember, you wanted to be this person instead of this person. Well, let's take a look. Because of where this $3 million lies, you get to take a 6% tax rate. 
safe withdrawal rate. Actually, it's more, but let's be conservative and let's use 6%. So you get to keep 180,000. Now, which one do you want to be? Well, traditional planning says you're ahead. Except because of where this money lays, there was zero federal tax, zero state tax, zero any tax. It's tax exempt. So you get to keep 180,000. Over here was 160 because you had to give it to the government. Now who do you want to be? Take it one step further. Husband and wife gets 50K. Social Security. Because of this and where it lives, it's treated differently than this. You get to keep it all. No taxes. So now, now you got $230,000 that you can spend. What about Medicare? It's treated the same way. This doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on the radar screen of the IRS. You get to keep, pay the lowest Medicare premium there is. You get to spend all $230,000. Right here, you get to spend $191,000, yet you started with 40% more. We took 60% of what you had over here and gave you 20% more spendable money. Now, if tax rates go up to 25% or 30%, this goes down. At 25%, this is 179,000. All right, it's 167,000 at 30%. Where does it stop, folks? This never changes. This is guaranteed, this is protected, this has no market risk. What if you took that $200,000 the first day of a 30% correction in the market. Well, you just blew this up. This has market risk, this has tax risk, because those are things you can't control. You have to wait for somebody to tell you. There is no market risk, there is no tax risk. And my question to you is, if you could take 60% of what you have and come out with 20 to 30% more spendable income for the rest of your life, would you wanna know how to do it? Because the IRS allows it, that's the tax code. So, Think about that. If you're curious about it, <clears throat> let me know. We'll have a conversation. If you don't believe it, let me know. I can prove it. But the point is, this is traditional thinking, traditional models. This is what's available but if you understand the tax code. So thanks again for joining me. I look forward to talking to you in the future.